guys, welcome back to another episode. I'm sure a lot of you watch YouTube. You might have come across a few people on YouTube. People like Peter McKinnon, Philip Bloom, Gerald Undone, Peter Lindgren. All these guys have one thing in common. They all have a great looking studio space. You might think, of course they do. You know, they earn revenue off YouTube and other sources. Here's the thing. You don't need a lot of money to create a good looking studio space. If you're a newcomer to YouTube like I am, you don't necessarily have all the money to splurge on expensive camera gear and expensive lighting. And so why don't we go and explore what makes a good content creation space? See the factors that make this work. So let's start off with lighting. Your best source of light is free and unless you live in the Arctic Circle, you can use this year round. I'm talking, of course, of the sun. Using window lighting is probably one of the most easiest and effective ways of lighting in photography and film. And best of all, it's free, it doesn't cost you a cent. But of course, it's not always available. Take my location, for example. I'm filming in my garage right now, and there's a small little window to the side that's not really accessible and it's not really practical. It doesn't offer me the best solution. I can't exactly move my whole computer desk to that window in the corner as it's high up on the wall and won't really offer any solution to my uh, studio. So if you're in a similar situation, consider pr probably investing in a small lighting source Currently, what's lighting me right now is the uh, Rotolite Neo 2. It's currently on loan from Sunshine Co. in Johannesburg and no, I have not been asked to promote this product. I'm not being paid to promote this product. I'm doing it out of my own free will and I won't review products I don't like and I won't use products I don't, I don't like. Now the Rotolite Neo 2 has been around for a while and since it's released there have been quite a few new lights similar to the Rotolite that have come out. I feel that the Rotolite Neo 2 for its size, mobility and price tag, you can't really beat it. You know, it's, it's an amazing little light to use. For a studio shoot like this, plug it into AC power and let it run like it's currently doing. However, if you are going out in the field and you don't have access to AC power, you can plug in a few batteries. I think it takes about six AA batteries. Plug them in at the back and you have power for a few hours. If you look on the rear of the light, you're met with an LED screen and two red knobs. The one knob changes the brightness, while the other knob changes your color temperature. Pushing these two knobs simultaneously gives you access to the menu. Browsing the menu, you're met with options to control strobe lighting, your flash sync speed, some special effects, and a few other things. It's a versatile light that offers your photographers and your vloggers a good starting point, as you can use this as a continuous video light, like I'm doing right now, or you can use this as a high sync flash for photography. And as a bonus, Rotolite has decided to even throw in compatibility with the Elenchrom Skyport. Besides the Skyport, Rotolite has also given you some light filters and diffusers. The filters and the diffusers you can slot in between the light and this little plastic thingy. Although when it comes to lighting, I do prefer something a little bit bigger. Now when it comes to a secondary light, it's often nice to have it a little bit subtler and maybe with a dash of color. This one I'm using right now is not an actual photography or film light. It's a, it's a bit of memorabilia from a band I really, really like. I really like the effect it has. It's that extra little bit of full on my skin that really just helps to just give a bit of detail in your shadows. Later on, I'll probably get another fill light on this side and mount the light that I'm currently using on the background. Speaking of backgrounds, it's often nice to have a bit of background interest. You can choose not to and that's perfectly fine. But I feel it's quite nice to give your viewers the option, you know, between a background and some guy's ugly mug. On to my left here, I've got a little cabinet full of stuff, cables and general crap. And on top of it, I thought, why don't I just put some old toys that I used to collect as a kid. Throw them on there along with a few vintage cameras. Just helps to decorate the frame a little bit more along with the little LED light that I've got back there. And now for the last factor in creating your studio. Sound. This little thing right here. Sound is probably your most important thing when it comes to filming. Besides obviously your camera and 
what you're filming. If you have good sound and you have bad video, as I said before, it doesn't really matter as long as you've got good sound. And now obviously I'm filming in my garage right now and as you can hear, it's quite a bit of echo. So the first steps I've taken to eliminate the echo is move the softbox closer to get rid of the uh, excess echoes and just keep the sound a bit more compact. Lay down a carpet, put the back draping on, even though I've got a computer right here with a fan going off, which is really, really annoying, but I'll get that sorted. You can get started already by just using thick curtains. Drape them all around you if you need to, or use egg boxes, use anything that can really, really take care of the sound. The denser material you have, the more your sound will get absorbed by this material and the less echo you'll have. That's why I've moved everything as close as possible to me and to this microphone, as well as moving myself closer to this microphone. So I'm directly speaking into it and all the sound goes straight in there without having a chance to bounce back and forth before it reaches the actual microphone. The type of microphone you also use plays a very important role as some microphones record everything in a 180 degree pattern while others record straight ahead like this one. This is the Rode VideoMic Pro Plus and I love using this as an on-camera mic as well as a voiceover setup or vlogging. Really really works well and I feel that the audio on this mic is just so so crisp. Love it. So that's it guys. I hope you found this video informative, helpful. If you're starting out like I am, let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Hit that like button if you like what you saw and subscribe so you get future updates on this channel and I'll see you in the next one.